fans, welcome to the campus of Western Washington University. You're inside Carver Arena, and tonight your Vikings play host to the Western Oregon Wolves. Fans, we would like to begin by acknowledging that we gather today on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands and North Cascades watershed from time immemorial. Please join us in expressing our deepest respect and gratitude for our indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and Nooksack tribe for their enduring care and protection of our shared lands and waterways. Fans, at this time, we'd like to invite you to rise if you are able and remove your hats. It's time now to honor America as the Western Washington University Band plays our national anthem. Now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's contest. First, the visitors from Western Oregon University. At guard, a 6'4", junior number one, Javel Collins. At guard, a 6'5", sophomore number two, Keont Myers. At forward, a 6'7", junior number 23, Cameron Benzel. At guard, a 6'6", senior number 30, Cameron Cranston. And at forward, a 6'10", senior number 34, John Morrell Keeler. Western Oregon is coached by Wes Pfeiffer. Coach Piper is assisted by Coach Brian Fisher, Michael Harmon, and Alex Sandin. Viking fans, are you ready? A 6'4 sophomore, number one, KJ Kai Johnson. Head guard, a six foot senior, number three, Daniel Hornbuckle. Head guard, a 5'10 junior, number five, the Rocket, D'Angelo Menace. 
Head guard, a 6'7 senior, number 11, Lucas Holden. And at forward, a 6'8 Richard Pressman, number 23, B.J. Colley. Your Vikings, they're coached by Tony Dominguez. He is assisted by David Dunham, Bob Hofstetter, Otavio Jude, and A.J. Albritton, six man. It's game time! Welcome to Week 2 Court and Carver Gym. I'm Jeff Evans. I got Butch Kamina by my side. We got GNAC basketball. We got two Westerns. Big time game. Let's this see what is, we got tonight, Butch. This is critical, Jeff. The, both of these teams scrapping for a, a berth in the 16th, one of the six berths in the postseason tournament. Western Oregon, a game in front of Western Washington. So there's a lot to play for as we have moved past the midpoint of the season here. Two teams looking to establish position. Collie and Benzel ready to tip it off here on Week U Court. Lucas Holden and the Vikings control the tip. We're underwear here, 20 minute halves. And Men's college basketball. Vikings enter with 11 and nine record, four and six in the GNAC. Western Oregon, eight and nine, five and five, but they're riding a three game winning streak. Minnis takes the first shot blocked by Benzel. Storyline here for Western Oregon. They've won three in a row, but uh, the return of number 30 out there, you see him in the yellow shoes, Cameron Cranston, the GNAC preseason player of the year. Missed the last seven games with a high ankle sprain, but he's back. Big time player for the Wolves. Looks like we got an either a travel or a offensive foul. Looks like a travel yeah, Vikings no. possession. We didn't see anything. It was just kind of quiet off the ball, and all of a sudden there was a call there. So Daniel Hornbuckle, senior point guard for Fairbanks, Alaska, running point. Kai Johnson, and then there's number 23, BJ Colley, who has had a speaks for himself. He's had a big time 2023. And there it is right there. He's just daring people to stop him off the dribble right now. And nobody's been able to do it. They have to bring extra people to stop him. The year of 23, B.J. Colley wears that on his jersey. Nice shot by Javel Collins. All tied up 2-2. Over his last seven games, B.J. Colley's averaging three blocks a game, 8.4 rebounds per game. And the biggest number, 16.7 points per game. Kai Johnson's gonna be called for an offensive foul, maybe used his elbow there a little bit on the replay. Yeah, kind of like got to the baseline, but then we'll see it here. And yeah, that arm is, is fully extended when the contact, pretty good call. Cranston brings the ball up. You see D'Angelo Minnis, number five, the reigning GNAC Defensive Player of the Year. Junior guard for the Vikings. Good defense by Daniel Hornbuckle there. Draws a turnover. Ball goes out of bounds. Vikings ball. Talk to Coach Wes Pfeiffer before the game. Western Oregon head coach. You know, Wolves are on a three-game winning streak. He talked a lot about keys to their game. Defense, defense, defense. Rebounding and points in the paint. So uh, when the Wolves are going well and they're, they've won a three in a row, it's, it's those things that they're doing well. Well, and numerically you see it on the boards. They've won the boards the last three games. Get one there. On the season, they've been out-rebounded. So they've really improved in that area in this streak. Javel Collins with the three-pointer. 5-2 Western Oregon leads. Quick five for Collins. Junior guard from Camarillo, California, out of Mount Hood Community College. Collie swings it outside the arc to Hornbuckle, gets it over to Lucas Holden from the side, can't hit the three pointer. Benzel with the rebound. Mr. Collins is feeling it. Myers is feeling it. 8 2 Wolves. Western Washington will call a timeout, try and hit reset here at the 17-15 mark in the first half.
good. <clears throat> I mean, dude. Welcome back. Western Oregon with a quick 8-2 lead behind the play of JaVale Collins. Three for three from the field, hit a pair of threes. He doesn't shoot them a lot. He's only taken 38 on the year, but he is shooting 50% from there. So somebody you don't want to leave open. He's got a couple open looks and some confidence here to start. Head coach Tony Dominguez of Western Washington call it a timeout there, looking to go over the defense. Hit reset a little bit. Six-point game. It's early. Trying to run an offensive play here. Lucas holding down on the block, swings it back out to D'Angelo Minnis. Vikings leading scorer on the season. Minnis is averaging 13.7 points per game. Look like Benzel uh, riding Lucas holding a little bit there on the baseline. The Vikings will trigger underneath. One foul each. Kai Johnson will take the inbounds play into Holden. B.J. Colley working down low. Draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Foul called on John Morell Keeler. 6'10 senior from Port Orford, Oregon and Umpqua Community College. Colley will shoot two here from the free throw line. Got the first, B.J. only at 59% from the line. Been shooting well from the charity stripe as of late. Get a little more comfortable, drawn more fouls, get to the free throw line a few more times. He's certainly getting a lot of attempts lately, yeah. Hits both free throws, 8-4 Western Oregon. We're going to have to be careful that we just can't say Western tonight. <laughs> Battle of the Westerns. Ironically, the last two teams in the GNAC to go to the Elite Eight. There's Cranston with the three. Kai Johnson with the rebound, swings it up to D'Angelo Minnis. Up tempo, hits Hornbuckle. He's going to shoot that. We know that. Just off the mark. Staying right here, though. Morel Keeler fouls B.J. Colley in the paint. A nice skip pass by, by Minnis in transition there. Got an open look for Hornbuckle. Couldn't knock it down, but still, it's a shot you'd like. Third team foul on the Wolves. We mentioned uh, Western Oregon went to the Elite Eight. 2015-16, Western Washington back-to-back -back seasons 11 and 12 and 12 and 13. And kind of ironic tonight, Butch. We're celebrating the 2012 national champion Western Washington basketball team, 10-year anniversary of that phenomenal most, team. Most of those team guys here tonight, it was great to see a lot of them before the game, a little ceremony, and honor them more at halftime this evening. Shot clock winding down, minutes from three, just off the mark. And it isn't inappropriate that the last GNAC reps in the Elite Eight for the West region are two Westerns. Yes, it is. Point Loma, of course, the last West regional team, I believe, to make it. They played in the national championship game. And uh, math serves me correctly, it was the year before COVID. So 18-19, Dalton Hamas, a Linden native and former Western Viking, was a national player of the year for the Sea Lions that year. That's correct. Myers with the three, rebounded again by Johnson, swings it up to Hornbuckle. Alley-oop on oh. just missed, slips out of the hands of Colley. Western Oregon gets the possession. Cranston showing a little rust early. Media timeout's going to be called, but uh, referee Anthony Gregory may have stopped play there when uh, Kai Johnson kind of went into the stands. So nice, nice job by the referee there to kind of read the room. Kai was into the stands and perfect time for a media timeout. Western Oregon leads Western Washington 8-4, 15-22 remaining in the first half. Kind of a slow moving game after that timeout called by Western Washington. Yeah, it seems like JaVale Collins is about the only guy on the floor who's for either team has really gotten rolling. B.J. Colley also has four points. We mentioned Cranston coming back. He's missed the last seven games. He was injured in the game against Western Washington down in Monmouth, Oregon. That game was played on December 29th. About 10 minutes left in the game, uh, won by Western in overtime by two points. Cranston kind of suffered a high ankle sprain. Uh, he's been working his way back. He did not play Thursday in the two-point win over Simon Fraser up in Burnaby, but he's back tonight. Maybe a little rust, but this guy can play ball. Uh, he's a Vancouver native out of Union High School, former Washington State Player of the Year, and, man, when the guy's on, he yeah. is on. He can flat well, out shoot the ball. Four games of his 10 earlier this year, tw over 20 points, 21 against the Vikings before getting hurt. Averaged 18 a game last year, so, no, he can fill it up. 
We'll have to watch with that high ankle. See, it, it almost looked a little bit on that shot like maybe he still isn't getting the full elevation that he wants, but I'm sure the Coach Pfeiffer is happy to have him back in the lineup tonight. He subbed out. Looks like uh, 35. Elu Cobb is into the game. Western Oregon's going to show some full court pressure here. All right. Vikings going to try and break the press here. A little different look out of the media timeout by the Wolves. Hornbuckle's running point. Collins on him, guarding up high. Down to Collier. Hits Jonathan Ned. Great nice. shot. Transfer from University of Georgia. Gets on the court and contributes right away. Such a soft touch from John Ned, isn't it? Just The ball just comes out of his hands so lightly. Just rolls. He's out here early every day practicing. And, man, it's a beautiful thing when you got a big man that can shoot like that. Uh, kind of our sixth man right now. Started most of the games early in the season. But true team player. Uh, things are rolling pretty good with Lucas Holden in the starting lineup. And, uh, and there's Collins again. He is on fire. Already past his average. The only average is about eight a game. So it's Western Washington six. Javar Collins ten. Daniel Hornbuckle from deep. In and out. Hornbuckle's looking to find, regain that three-point stroke. Always deadly from beyond the arc. Long shot by Clay. Rebounded by West Oregon. Reset the shot clock at 20. Oh. Not sure if Collie got a block on that. Wouldn't shock me, but uh, he certainly got the rebound. Just ripped it away from the from the Western Oregon player there. Collie down low, spin move out to Jonathan Ned. Here he goes again from the from the arc, but uh, comes up short. Clay with the ball guarded by Lucas Holden. Good defense by the Vikings. They showed a lot of that against St. Martin's on Sa on Thursday. Four-point loss, but they played the Saints extremely tough. Colley again with the rebound. Look at this. Big man running the court. Ball's going to go to Western Oregon, though. Couple subs for Western Oregon. Number 12, redshirt sophomore guard, R.J. Valise. Redshirt freshman guard, He's 6'7". They list him as a guard, ironically, from Sacramento. Peter Casey Guananji. You got through that one well. Yeah. Well, I struggled with that one pregame, but you know what? I, I said it enough times. I think I'm good with it now. <laughs> Defense! 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 Vikings going to have some subs. Looks like Darius Gary and Nick Velp ready to check in. Yosani Clay with a three-pointer. 13-6 Wolves lead the Vikings, 12-51 remaining in the first half. We talked a little bit about the national championship team for the Vikings in 2011-12. They'll be honored at halftime. So stay on the webcast, and you'll see some familiar faces holding their misses from three from the sideline. It's early, but the Vikings uh, a little bit ice cold from the field, two for 11. Field goal percentage of uh, just 18%. Collins again, two-point shot. He's got it rolling. 12 points already. It's five for five from the field. Also has two rebounds. Played every minute so far. I wouldn't take him out. I wouldn't take him out either. Jonathan Ned here goes over to Daniel Hornbuckle. Into the paint. Nice touch. Hornbuckle, two-pointer. Nice patience by Daniel Hornbuckle. His first two points of the game. Senior from Fairbanks, closing out his collegiate career. Already passed 1,000 points for his complete collegiate career. Valise with a nice touch from free throw line extended. Hornbuckle's 1,000 points include time at Alaska Fairbanks, his hometown, and then one great season at Portland Community College and two seasons here at Western. Ned for three. Got to love that. When his stroke is on, like you said, it yeah. is pretty. It is a very nice touch. The ball gets up there very soft. 
even when he was drifting there. He wasn't really set. He caught it, was drifting left, and still able to hit that. 6'9", junior from Brentwood, California, and that's in Northern California. Went to junior college in Florida. Northern California native, went to junior college in Florida and then transferred to Georgia for two years. But with COVID, he gets an extra year, so he's got two years left here at Western, which is awfully nice. Holden dumps it down low to Collie. Nice touch, but too much. Had the mismatch, but couldn't quite finish. Transition, Valise off the board. There's Collie again with the rebound. Three rebounds already for B.J. Collie. Holden from three. Can't get it to go. Left-handed stroke. Just short off the iron. Seventeen eleven, Western Oregon leads. Just about the halfway point of the first half here and coming to you from WeQ Court and Carver Gym on the Western Washington University campus. Good defense by BJ Colley against Cobb. Holden bringing the ball down. Co Ned, oh. hey, bank is open. When it's going good, it's going good. Take him any way you can get him, right? <laughs> He, I did not hear a call on that. We should be clear. That's all but right. Went. Eight points, two for two from beyond the arc. But, man. And nobody is as hot as JaVale Collins right now. I want to heat check that guy right now. JaVale Collins, 15 points. Hornbuckle for three. Drains it. Right back in it. Vikings trail by three. 2017 offensive. Picked up a little bit here in the last three, four minutes. He's human. He's Javel human. Collins he missed. has missed. Hornbuckle brings the ball up. Drives the lane. Holden finds Minnis. Dribbling out front. Finds Collie. Shot clock winding down. Jonathan Ned. Fake for three. Just misses. Holden gets the offensive rebound. Menace wide open for three, just off the front iron. Ball's going to stay with Western Washington. Got a mini line change for both teams. We're going to go to a media timeout. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Try it now. Zero never tasted so good. Welcome back. The Vikings trailing 20 to 17, but they've narrowed the margin with a little 11-5 run because of the play of Jonathan Ned, who's come in, hit a couple threes, won a bank that he probably didn't call, but will take it and uh, He's, he's narrowed this margin. So Western only shooting. The, oops, there it is. Western Washington only shooting 31.6% from the field on 6 of 19 shooting. So to only be down 3 at this point is a pretty good deal for the Vikings. At the other end of the floor of the story is JaVale Collins. His season high is only 19, but he's already got 15 here in the first 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Hit his first six shots in the field before finally missing a three-pointer a moment ago. Vikings will have the ball inbounds under the basket. Darius Gary checks in. He'll inbounds the ball. Nick Velp. Isaac Morrow as well. Vikings on a mini 11-5 run. It's not necessarily a run, but a outscored the Wolves 11-5 over the last three minutes. Four for six shooting during that span. Here's Darius Gary. Kicks it to Nick Velp from three. Drains it. Oh, very patient. Nice penetration by Gary, and Velp was able to set his feet. Very good knockdown shooter when you give him that opportunity. Velp, a sophomore from Seattle, also went to Golden State Prep in his gap year. Familiar name to Northwest uh, basketball fans. His father, the late Christian Velp, 
All-time leading scorer at the University of Washington. Isaac Morrow is going to be called for the foul. His first. Second team foul on the Vikings. Looks like Cameron Benzel will go to the free throw, on for, free throw line for two shots. That's a nice little look by Cranston, wasn't it, to find Benzel there. A little wraparound pass, sending Benzel to the line for two. Pretty easy to know when Cam Cranston's on the court because he's got those yellow shoes. He's kind of like a soccer player, a striker that uh, wants to have a different color of shoes to make sure that he gets the goals and to credit it to him. But, uh, yeah, it's right out they there. They are but it's the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Western Oregon, one of the things that they do struggle with is free throws. They're only 60, just a tick under 66% for the season, which is not a, a high number at all. 0 for 2 there for Benzel. First two free throw chances for them in this game. Hornbuckle brings the ball up, guarded by Quint Myers. We've seen a lot more of this of Daniel Hornbuckle since he came back into the starting lineup after sitting out. More on the point. Jonathan, Another three-pointer for Jonathan Ned, and you know, like you said, Daniel Hornbuckle when he's running the point, a lot of the offense going through him, and he's finding that hot hand right now. He's yep. looking for 13. He's finding 13, and 13's putting it down. A quick 11 for John Ned. Nice drive by Cranston there. His first two points of the game. It was good defense by Ned, but Cranston got to the basket. Nice touch off the glass. Velp, Hornbuckle working a little screen and go up top. Daniel doesn't need much room to shoot. Carson Frinky into the game, grabs that rebound. Vikings cause the turnover. Hornbuckle up, but Cranston is right there with a nice block. Looks like we got another media timeout. You'll see the ball will stay with the Vikings. 23-22, Western Washington leads after that Jonathan Ned three-pointer just about a minute ago. Vikings on a 9-2 run, Butch. Big story here for the Vikings. Each player has a hot hand. Jonathan Ned, 11 points on four for six shooting. Yeah, he's come off the bench and, 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 and turned the course, of the trajectory of the game around. Let's put it that way. You know, the Western Oregon had the good early run behind Collins, and Ned has brought the Vikings back. Give him that 23-22 lead. That play a moment ago, we talked about Cranston coming back in off an ankle. Daniel Hornbuckle looked like he had just blown by him, and Cranston able to stay with it, recover, get that block, knock the ball out of bounds. Kind of deked him a little bit, kind of let him get by him a little bit and was ready for that block. Cranston, a you know, senior guard, listed at 6'6 from Vancouver Union High School. He's had some big shots in his career in the GNAC. Uh, it's good to see him healthy out there. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you know, he missed some games recently. Changes the dynamic, but it... Uh, uh, he is very much, the to use the Clark Kellogg term, the stat sheet stuffer in the top five last year in the GNAC in, in scoring, in steals, and in block shots, and a good rebounder as well. Yeah. Lots of columns get filled up by, yeah. Mr., by Mr. Cranston. Vikings got their own stat sheet filler upper. We'll call him Kai Johnson. There's games where he's got six, seven assists, rebounds, steals, blocks, points. Um, he's on the bench right now, but he'll look to see number one out on the court pretty soon. Morrow down low. Nice, nice move by Isaac Morrow. <laughs> Recognized the mismatch, stepped right in and posted up hard on, on Dyshawn Hughes and got the bucket. You won't meet a nicer young man than Isaac Morrow. Good to see him getting some minutes out there. Works his tail off in practice. Started his collegiate career out at Concordia, Portland, before their school, not just their athletic department, shut down. Native of Lakewood, product of a great basketball program at Curtis High School. Good defense by the Vikings. Nick Velp caused some distraction there. Benzel couldn't get the, the stuff. Hornbuckle brings it up. Looking for Velp on the block, gets him. Finds the hot hand, Jonathan Ned for three. Just off the mark, Cranston with the rebound. Keont Myers brings it up. Oh. They're gonna count the basket. I'm gonna hold any official judgments off air tonight because that's not my job. Uh, 
Count the basket, and it will be a foul. Go to the free throw line. I'll, I'll say a little more. The weird thing about it was it was so late. There is contact there. The call was just so late. It was kind of a surprise. I give Hughes credit. That's a tough finish. You, you know, you're banging into somebody and throwing that thing up, and, and he got it off softly and finished it. Great body control by Dyson mm -hmm. there. Uh, gets up, kind of kind of shot put it in there, but it, it made it. And uh, personal foul looked like was called by, it's not on the board yet, but I think it was Jonathan Ned. They are. They're going to call it on Ned. First foul, three-point play. Dyson Hughes converts. 25-25. It just hit the six-minute mark left here in the first half. For those watching on Vikings TV, stay tuned in at halftime. The 2012 National Championship Viking team will be honored and celebrated with a video, and uh, they'll be out on the court. Velp kind of gets the ball stuff, but Isaac Morrow, nice hustle play, puts the ball out, resets. Shot clock still down, hitting six. Morrow with the left hand. Isaac Morrow. Oh, he's given a lift. Love the minutes that that kid's producing right now. But Cranston goes, tries to drive. Isaac made a nice defensive play. They're going to call him for a personal foul. But you know what? That's a good hustle play right there by Morrow. Yeah, he got beaten, recovered. And, and that's not a terrible foul. You send a guy to the line who would have had a layup. So you're making an effort at the ball. Nothing wrong with that at all. And, and Cranston, although it was a fall from a bit of height, fell squarely in a way that he wasn't going to get hurt. So Morrow didn't put, land on that ankle. Morrow putting in some great minutes here. Cranston hits the first of two free throws. Yeah, four points for Morrow and then kept that last possession alive with a great offensive rebound right on the baseline, able to save it, keep the ball in play. As B.J. Colley will return. We've jinxed Isaac Morrow. He makes two great plays, and we start talking about him, so he gets the hook. That's all right. You know, two fouls, great minutes. Yep. But B.J. Colley back on the floor. Vikings pretty big right now with Gary, Colley, Ned, and Velp. Yeah, four guys at 6'8 are over, and D'Angelo Minnis at 5'10". Yeah. Cranston hits both free throws, tied up 27-27. Zach Moore looks like checks into the game for the Wolves. Sophomore San Diego Del Norte High School. Vikings going to try to break the press here. Wolves kind of brought that out midway through the first half. Nice job by Darius Gary to get the ball to D'Angelo Minnis. Bell pits Ned. Left hand oh. across the lane. Wow. The full arsenal is out tonight from Jonathan Ned. Talk about five tool players in baseball. Jonathan Ned showing it all night. Nick Velp with a nice block right there. Looks like it's going to stay with Western Oregon. Not sure if they're going to review that on the video monitor, but. This move by Jonathan Ned. Spinning into the lane, falling away, and a little half hook with the left hand. He's up to 13 points in just 11 minutes of action. Oh, nice, nice move by, by Benzel there. Elevated very quickly to get that shot off. Junior from Yonkala, Oregon. Another product of Umpqua Community College. Menace finds Hornbuckle. Just inside the three-point line. Can't get it to go. Moore with the rebound. Ned's career high this season. 21 points in the GNAC opener at Simon Fraser. Morrow Keeler steps out of bounds. Kai Johnson checks back in. Sophomore from Olympia. Started this game. He's going to come back in for Darius Gary. Bring the ball out of bounds. The bench did well, so Kai was able to get a fairly extended rest there. Hornbuckle double teamed near the midcourt line. Velp to Johnson to Colley into the paint. Spin move. Velp with the offensive rebound. Resets the shot clock at 20. Can't get it to go. Benzel with the rebound. Nice defense. Steal by Daniel Hornbuckle. Minnis brings the ball up.
Kai Johnson finds Valp. Back to Johnson. Great pass by Colley to Valp. He's blocked by Benzel. Kind of brought the ball down around his knees. Gave Benzel a chance to make a nice defensive play. Good crowd here, kind of filling in Carver Jim. Benzel with the offensive board. Myers out front. Benzel with a left-handed shot from beyond the three-point arc. Oh, good rebound. Moral Keeler, the putback. Three minutes to go in the first half. 31-29 Western Oregon leads. Great. GNAC game here. Kai Johnson drives, does what he does best. Off the backboard, ties it right back up at 31. His first bucket of the night. The athleticism that Kai Johnson has shown this year is just amazing. There's times when he can flat take a game over. Explosiveness off the dribble is just incredibly impressive. The native Olympia talked to the St. Martin's coach during their shoot around and he's been so impressed with Kai, who's a native of that area, the, the jump he's made from high school. Mm -hmm. Left handed hook by Moral Keeler. Puts the Wolves back up by two points, 33-31. Approaching the two-minute mark here in the first half. Don't forget, 2012 Vikings National Championship team will be honored at halftime. It'll be right here on Vikings TV. It'll be a little highlight video from the National Championship game, and you'll get to see some of those players that are here. Turnover by B.J. Colley. Converted to a basket for Western Oregon. 35-31, Wolves lead. One of the things you're seeing teams do, we talked about it when BJ got that first bucket, is they are collapsing down really hard. And when he puts the ball on the floor and he does it well and he gets him to the rim, they're just digging in and guys are coming in and swatting at it and, and, and forcing him to, to make quicker decisions. Floating jumper, D'Angelo Minnis, great body control in the air and the nice touch. Approaching the one minute mark here in the first half. Phelps with the offensive board, hits Minnis. Nick Vell for three, nails it. Yeah, a Great drive by Minnis, finds Velp, who's now hit two three-pointers this half, puts the Vikings up 36-35, just under a minute to play. Velp down on the block, guarding Moral Keeler. Good defense, straight up. But a nice basket, left-handed touch from the big man. He's got six points, has hit all three of his shots from the field. Let's see if the Vikings can go two for one here. Hornbuckle finds Velp. Probably too late now. About a 11 second difference but on the shot clock, but the Vikings turn the ball over. Not good timing right there. 39-36, Western Oregon's gonna have this lead. See if the Vikings can get a basket here to end the first half. And they'll work for the last shot, see if there's a high screen or if they just let Hornbuckle go. A little weave action. Hornbuckle from the other county. And he drains it. Ties it all up. 39-39. He might have been in Snohomish with that shot, but I'm oh, telling man. you, it went down, ties it up. Gives momentum to the Vikings heading into halftime. Yeah, an up and down first half for both teams. You know, both teams had bursts of momentum, and we end up going in 39 all. An entertaining first half, and we'll have an entertaining halftime well with the introduction of the 2012 team. Yeah, well, stay right here at Vikings TV. Like I said, we're going to have a little tribute to the 2012 national champions. Ten-year anniversary of that team. Celebrate them. You'll see some familiar faces. There'll be a highlight film. Enjoy it. We'll see you on the flip side of halftime. 2012 National Championship team. Now, during the 2011-12 season, the Vikings won the GNAC regular season title. Their record was 16-2. They had an early exit from the GNAC tournament. They hit reset, refocused, and went on what would become a historic six-game win streak all the way to the national title. Now along the way, they took care of Grand Canyon, Chico State. Then they had the West Regionals in their hand. 
and nothing better than to take down your rival SPU to make it and punch your ticket to the Elite Eight in Highland Heights, Kentucky. Now when they got to Kentucky, they started off slow, but they overcame a 16-2 deficit early in the game, went on to defeat Midwestern State 64-63. Stonehill was up next. The Vikings took care of them, 71-66. And then Montevello in the national title game. The Vikings roared back in the second half, winning 72-65 to capture the national championship. All right, fans, direct your attention to the Viking Tron and check this video of history out. Aforementioned players, Blanche, who's got the ball now, as well as Hennepin, and that's typical Blanche just taking it inside, as you say, 15 feet and in. He's outstanding. But it breaks down the defensive rebounding positioning. Woodworth, both teams, Dan, very effective at attacking. The they uh, they were just dominant on the offensive glass in that game. Here's Blanche on the run. We're tied at six. Three. Mitchell, he can hit that shot. That is all day long for him. He is out for Western Washington. The Vikings looking to score. Blanche on the alley-oop. <laughs> Hail to the Vikings. Boy, does he have talent. And lineage. Hennepin. That was an outlet pass. Woodworth pumps for three. That sure, why eight. not? That's why, a pretty good sequence, yeah. huh? Why not finish it? Again, Mitchell right there. He has three threes from that spot on the floor. And Hennepin, strong with the basketball. That's a big time move. And it was big time. Hennepin oh. going reversal, speaking of big time. And it's all over. Western Washington, 110 years of basketball, finally brings home a national championship. Enjoyed it, Dan. Oh, it's great, Tim. We've crowned a champion for Dan Bonner. This is Tim Rando saying so long. Western Washington, your champions of Division II. On the other side, we'll be in Studio 43 for the road to the Final Four with Greg Gundam and the guys. Bye -bye. Fans, without further ado, we have members of the staff, coaching staff, and players on the floor. Let's take a moment to give them some Viking love. We're going to go down the list and acknowledge all of them. We're going to start off with our team manager, Ryder Cunningham. Our student assistant that year, Josh Moore. Our video coordinator, Aaron Rosenberg. The guy that keeps all the players healthy, Lonnie Lyon. Assistant coach, Rob Visser. The legendary head coach, Brad Jackson. Now let's meet some of the players in the house. We'll start off 
with number one, A.D. Alfred Davis. Number two, the D-Train, Dane Thor. Number three, Rico Wukas. Number 11, PJ Paul Jones. Number 14, Richard Woodward. Number 20, the Wizard, John Allen. Number 21, Mr. 1000, Rory Black. Number 34, Zach Bam Bam Hennepin. Number 35, Dan Young. Number 40, Damian Fisher. And number 42, Big Smooth, Chris Mitchell. Now, fans, if you'd like to take a quick second, don't forget that Tony Dominguez and Otavio Jude were part of this, but they're working tonight coaching. Show your love one more time for the 2012 National Champion Western Washington University Vikings. Best. You can be the King Kong banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war. You can talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock. Yeah. You can move a mountain, you can break rocks. You can be a master, don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself and you go find yourself.
tell us why you had to hide away for so long. So long. Where did we go wrong? Welcome back to Wiku Court at Sam Carver Gymnasium, an outstanding halftime honoring of the 2012 national champions and seeing some of the highlights of the first half. With Daniel Hornbuckle pulling up here. I'll give you some of the rundown, individual scoring. Really two guys doing it, one at each end. JaVale Collins at 15 points for Western Oregon, all in the first about 10 minutes. And then John Ned, Jonathan Ned comes off the bench, scores 13 for Western Washington of the, of the Vikings, 39. They were the two big ones. Also for the Vikings, Daniel Hornbuckle had eight. Uh, Nick Velp had six. At the other end, Hughes had seven. And Morrill Keeler, the center, had six points, uh, going three for three from the field. Uh, we, we see the full uh, halftime stats there. Western Oregon shot almost 52% from the field and four of 12 on threes. The Vikings only 42.9, but they were down in the mid 30s for much of the half and were able to pick that up. Hit all, just two free throws, and then a seven of 16 from three point range, which, which made a difference. Ned and Hornbuckle hitting five, and, and, and let's go this way. Ned hit three threes, Hornbuckle and Velp each hit a pair. Uh, started out with a Western Oregon edge and rebounding. Vikings narrowed that as well. Turnovers pretty limited for both teams. Not a lot of fouls, not a lot of turnovers. A fairly cleanly played first half. Maybe at a pace, Jeff, that's been a little bit slower than the other three games we've seen in this homestand. Uh, Western Oregon has been a little bit more deliberate than some of the other teams, and they've limited the Vikings' opportunities to get out and run. Fully expect a little more of a uh, track meet in the second half. Vikings are at their best when they're fast and they're rotating. Yeah. See what they come out here in the second half. They'll switch sides. Looks like the Vikings will go with the original starting five. So you got Holden, Kali, Hornbuckle, Menace, and Johnson. I suspect the Wolves will do be doing the same thing. Here we go, Butch. Yep. 20 more minutes of action here. Hopefully we don't go overtime. They did that in Monmouth, these two teams <laughs> earlier this season. Maybe a battle of wills here about the pace in this second half. We'll see who can establish their imprint on the pace of the game. Collins inbounds the pass to Cranston, guarded by Kai Johnson. Early good defense by Lucas Holden forced the turnover. They look to go to Benzel down below. Pass a little too much on it. Off his hands, goes down. Here's Hornbuckle bringing the ball up from point guard. Try to update you on some GNAC scores from around the conference as, uh, as we get checking the Twitter sphere. B.J. Colley bangs down low and in. 
final from earlier today up in Alaska, the battle of the uh, Sea Wolves and Anooks, won by Alaska Fairbanks, 89-79. That game was played in the Patty Center. Nice, almost an alley-oop there to Morel Keeler. 41-41, knotted up, 19 minutes remaining in regulation. Another final to pass along to you. Oh. The lob by Hornbuckle. Thought he was going for the shot, but I really do think he found Collie waiting there at the rim for the lay-in. They'll try and get a Central Washington, Montana State billing score here a little bit. Looks like their live stats were down. Morel Keeler on a foul in the post. That is his third. So Big early foul there for the Wolves here in the second half. Yeah, this early in the half, that is very significant. He's been playing well. Had a great five-minute stretch there at the end of the second half where I believe he got all six of his points. Baseline, Kai Johnson tries to find Collie. Ball's knocked away. A steal for the Wolves when uh, talked to Coach Pfeiffer earlier today. He said when they're stealing the ball like that, that's when they're at their best. Nice ball control from Collins. Once again, 17 now for JaVale Collins. Closing in on a season high, I believe it was 19 you mentioned earlier. Hornbuckle double teamed up top. Over to Holden. Tried to draw some contact. Ball's blocked away. Possession goes to the Wolves. Cranston tries to go coast to coast. Alley-oop to Benzel. They didn't communicate very well, but <laughs> grabs it and goes in. Same result there. He threw a lob off the board. I know that's not what he meant to do, but that's what he ended up doing. It was not a shot, but he threw it up. It came back off the board to Benzel for the lay-in. Question, do you get an assist on that? I would I say no. Uh, Holden for three. He's just a little bit off tonight. Given that it was intended to be a pass, I might be generous. Officially, oh. it was not. <laughs> Collie tips the ball away. Vikings get the rebound. Down 45-43. Hornbuckle oh. turns the ball over. There's the alley-oop. And one. Tony Dominguez looks like he's going to call a timeout here after that basket by Collins, who's equal to his season high with 19 points, and he'll be going to the free throw line. Here's we'll get a quick look at it. A big lob in the lane, and with the, with the extension of the media timeout, we will go to the break. Western Oregon leads 47-43. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Try it now. Zero never tasted so good. Welcome back. Western Oregon with a 47-43 lead over Western Washington three minutes into the second half. And, and one of the stories here, Jeff, in this early portion of the half has been turnovers. The Vikings only had four turnovers the entirety of the first half. have had three here in just three minutes. And it's enabled the Wolves to get out, and particularly in that last occasion, get out and transition and score. So they've opened up this four-point lead. And the man of the night, JaVale Collins, 19 points already, 8 of 9 from the field. And he'll go to the line looking to add one more. Vikings only have seven turnovers in the game. Wolves have six. But here's the key stat. Looks like 13 points off turnovers for Western Oregon. 14th if uh, makes That's this free throw. 
That's really efficient when there's only seven. Yep, they, Every time there's been a mistake, they've made the Vikings pay. Capitalizing on those mistakes is what's going to win ball games. 48-43, five-point lead for Western Oregon. Very early here still in the second half. Hornbuckle finds Kali, who goes to Isaac Moreau. The hot hand, Jonathan Ned, off the back of the iron. D'Angelo Minnis comes out of the scrum with the rebound. Smallest guy on the court, getting the board. Isaac Morrow tries to find Ned with the pass. The ball will tipped. stay on this side. A very tight window to try and get that ball into. Ned would have had a layup if it got there, but it was a very tight window. Wasn't much margin here. Ned inbound pass to Hornbuckle. Jonathan Ned again for three. Off the back iron. Benzel with the rebound. Already his 10th board of the game to lead all players. Nice defense by Isaac Morrow. Given the number 24 a lot of love tonight, he deserves it. BJ Colley up top, working down low. It's going to be blocked by Morrow Keeler. Out of bounds. Western Oregon ball leads to the media timeout. Looks like we're going to head to a timeout here. 48-43, Western Oregon leads Western Washington. Right here from Weekview Court and Carver Gym. Good start for Western Oregon in the second half here. Western Washington had a little bit of trouble with turnovers. Probably going to talk about that in the huddle. Butch, how do you address that from a standpoint of getting back to what was going well in the first half? You want to get back and execute. And I think maybe the broader thing for this team has been that they have played good in so many in stretches of so many games lately. And yet it's been those little moments uh, uh, of struggle that have ended up costing them victories. If you go back to the other night, you go back to last Saturday where, or last Thursday where they played about 33 really good minutes against an excellent St. Martin's team. But about a two minute stretch in the first half and a four or five minute stretch in the second half probably cost them the ball game. So you've had a little bit of a blip here. How do you reestablish the, the flow and the momentum and the consistency you had in the opening half? You've got to find some way to, to find some sets that, that will work and get you some good looks. Vikings have a deep bench. Sometimes mixing and matching is a little bit difficult, trying to get guys minutes, trying to find the right combination. Coming out of this media timeout will be Darius well, Gary, D'Angelo Minnis, Isaac Morrow, Jonathan Ned, Daniel Hornbuckle. One of the things to look at, at least a couple times, we've seen Daniel Hornbuckle guarded by Cameron by Cameron Cranston, who is not as quick as Hornbuckle to begin with, playing on a bad ankle. Maybe when you get that, you isolate him a little bit. Benzel up top, going to shoot the three, left-handed stroke. Nice rebound, Isaac Morrow. Hornbuckle bringing the ball up. Finds Ned down low. Looking to go up top, left hand oh. over Cranston. What a basket. The defender we talked about, but not the player, not the attacker, but it worked. It's great good defense, night. better shot. Yeah, it was. Great, great night for Jonathan Ned. 15 points now. Doing a lot of great things out there, including getting this rebound. He's boarding, he's shooting, gets the ball up to D'Angelo Minnis, finds Hornbuckle from his range. Little long. Like we said, Daniel Hornbuckle. Pretty much anywhere inside that half court line, it's an uh, open uh, game sometimes. We saw I won't, evidence I won't at the go end that of the half, far, right? but yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like they're going to get Isaac Morrow here for the foul. That'll be his that's, third. That's not a bad foul. That's a, that's a layup or a dunk if there's no foul there. And again, Jonathan Ned, that nice little reach for that long left arm. First glimpse of Matthew Mays now into the game. He's going to be coming in for Daniel Hornbuckle. Mays, a sophomore guard out of Southern California. Teammates at Golden State Prep with Nick Velp. First year as a Viking. Talk about athleticism. That kid can get above the rim. Great defense oh. by Jonathan Ned. Causes the turnover there. Defense on the perimeter also cause that yeah probably a bit of an ill-advised pass but but Ned a very athletic play to make them pay for it menace oh, 
nice shot by Diaz. Creates just a little bit of space. About a 15-footer from the baseline. Brings the Vikings to within 1.48-47 at the 14-22 mark here. Second half coming to you from Carver Gym and WeQ Court on the Western Washington University campus. Menace being a pest out front like he usually is. Jonathan Ned, good defense against Keont Myers. D'Angelo bringing the ball down. Resets, calling a play here from Coach Dominguez. Coach Dominguez done a great job with this program. Missed shot by D'Angelo. The GNAC is as balanced as I have seen in my eight years at this level. Any given night, any team is gonna can give you a, a great game. It's uh, one to ten, it's it's very tough to win in this conference. Oh, it's very tough. And Let alone the talent that exists on the rosters. You got a five states and a province and three time zones. The travel on these student athletes is is pretty crazy. Keon Myers with the up and under puts the Wolves up 50 to 47. Yeah, talked to the former GNAC player this afternoon. They just talked about how much more balanced the league has come over the last couple of years. And Teams putting more into their programs, and, and everybody can win on a given night now. Darius Gary with a nifty up and under, can't get it to go. Rebound by Western Oregon, brought up by Yosani Clay. Clay with the jumper, too long. Rebound by Matthew Mays. Watch the dunk here, this kid can fly, and one. Maybe the leap was a little more horizontal than vertical there so that he could get through those two defenders, but that, that last step, long step, so he sees that little gap and just burst through, slipped a little bit, was still able to finish. And get, the, uh, get the extra here, see if he can knock this down, tie this game at 50. Transfer from West LA College, Inglewood native. As am I. Great to see the Second, third player tonight come right off the bench and make an immediate impact. Nick Vell did that with a three. Yeah. Mike is going a little bit deeper. It's the free it's throw, 50-50, we're all tied. Been closer to eight guys the last few games. It's been 10 tonight. Little weave up top for the Wolves. Keon Myers with the ball. D'Angelo Minnes on him, the defensive player of the year in the GNAC last year. Good defense. Myers somehow finds an inch and takes it up and under 52-50 Western Oregon. Kai Johnson through the paint and in. For those following at home, Western Washington's women's team is up in Alaska. They just started against Alaska Anchorage. Mays with the rebound. I had the final I was going to tell earlier, and I kind of just let it go, but great battle in Ellensburg tonight. Montana State Billings beat Central Washington 70-69. to Yellow Jackets remain in first place in the conference. We're going to have a foul call to number 11, Zach Moore. Will lead to a media timeout. <laughs> Looks like we're going to stay right here. We look there at Western Oregon's bench, coaching staff. Wes Pfeiffer in his fourth season. Wes Pfeiffer, a graduate of Penn State Altoona, a Division III school, uh, where he played for uh, a longtime NBA player, Armin Gilliam, who spent a lot of his career in Phoenix. I'm trying to remember some of the other spots that he was, but a an outstanding power forward. Going over a few statistics here just to get you updated. Jonathan Ned still leads the Vikings with 15 points on 6 for 11 shooting. Vikings are shooting 44.7%. They're 21 for 47. Rebounding is kind of pretty even, 25-24 Vikings. We mentioned the turnovers earlier, 8-7, uh, so Vikings have turned the ball over eight times, Western Oregon seven. Pretty clean game by each team. That's a pretty low number uh, in this game this day where no. it's a lot of fast pace, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in the court. So it's so a good job by the Vikings there and, and by the Wolves to keep possession. 
And it's going to be Western Washington's ball out of this media timeout. 52-50, all knotted up. 11.40 to remaining in regulation here. We're in the second half calling the game from WeQ Court and Carver Gym. Ty Johnson inbounds ball. He'll go to find Jonathan Ned. Right in front of the Vikings bench. Gets the ball stripped away. Looked like Morel Keeler. Cranston bringing the ball up against Morrow. Nifty left-handed lay-in. Didn't need much there. A little spin off the backboard and in. Shows what he can do with his talent. Kai Johnson right down the court. Finds Isaac Morrow for three. Off the mark. Matthew Mays fighting for it. Oh, and he's going to win it. Matthew Mays, great hustle play. Ball's going to remain with the Vikings. Shot clock resets at 20. Get a good look at it here. Morrow's three kicks off to the right corner. Great battle between these two and... Yeah, it looks like Frankie was out of bounds when he touched the ball, giving it to Western by Washington. Morrow doesn't shoot many threes, but, man, he had a huge one earlier this year against Hawaii Pacific during the holiday tournament. Kai Johnson, you say he's going to be on the ground, non-shooting foul. Looks like maybe Cranston got him. Yes, he did. That's his first of the night, so no trouble for him there. As Daniel Hornbuckle will return for the Vikings, replacing D'Angelo Minnis. Cranston's first foul, fourth team foul on the Wolves in the second half. Bonus hits at seven fouls in men's college basketball. Two shots when you hit 10. Johnson into Matt Mays, spin move, step back. Matt Mays has come in and been very aggressive offensively since he's come into the game. Five points for him now. Great to see number two out on the court. Like I said, if there's, a, if there's an athlete of the year or on this team with the most athletic talent. I gotta believe it's him. He can get a, he can do it all, get above the rim. Putting the little things together is gonna be the challenge for him, but man, he's got he's got the skills. Oh, that's a nice shot. Dayson Hughes with a step back right around the free throw line, gives the Wolves 56-54 lead, approaching the 10 minute mark here in the second half. Guy Johnson, ball oh. control. They're gonna call him for. They're gonna call it on the floor. They're gonna call Hughes with the foul. They're going to say that Johnson hadn't gone into the act of shooting yet. We'll see it here. It is kind of a weird foul because he gets in front. And yeah, that's probably the right call. Yeah. He really had not gotten to a point where he'd fully gathered the ball to go up yet. Dyson Hughes was called for that personal foul. Microphone picking up Western Oregon coach Wes Pfeiffer. It's always a battle between these two teams, I can tell you that. There's been a lot of games where big shots have been made down the stretch. Vikings won in overtime earlier this season in Monmouth. Isaac Morrow's going to be called for an offensive foul. Viking bench did not agree with that call. Gonna look at it. See if he gets a forearm out. Yeah, he does. He it's, does. Now, Great call by the officials. I think Morrow Keeler might have been stumbling anyway, but if the official sees that arm, Knocking a guy over, that's what's going to get called. Nobody has a tougher job on the court than uh, these, the guys in stripes always do a good job in the, in the GNAC, and we appreciate what they do. It is, I believe it's Referee Appreciation Month, but uh, should always be Referee Appreciation Month for <laughs> what they're doing. Some months were more appreciative than others. Cranston goes up, great defense. They're going to call another late foul on Colley. Ball was already going up the call, court, and they called a foul on B.J. Colley. Game's kind of become disjointed the last couple minutes here, Jeff. Just a little stop-start, a few fouls, a few just other stoppages in play. and See if these two teams can, can settle back in and get into the, the rhythm that they had for a, a moment earlier in this half. Looks like B.J. went straight up. That's what he was pleading for, but uh, tough call. Cranston's going to go the free-throw line for two shots. Cranston now with seven points. See the great view here from the backboard cams at Carver. Nice, nice to have that visual on this webcast. And the, and the work that our booth does is just phenomenal. They are second to none in this conference. Of course, while we're talking about WeQ Court and Carver Gym, the GNAC Championships will be held right here in Carver Gym, March 2 through 4. Top six teams in the standings on both the men's and women's side will join, come to Bellingham, 
fight for the conference title and the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. So uh, we'll have ticket information up on www.vikings.com in the coming weeks. Kai Johnson, wow, Ooh. the spurt of I, speed I, through the lane and the ball control all and the five, basket. At some point in that drive, all five Wolves were in the neighborhood, but he got through the whole lane, the gauntlet, so to speak, and finished. Johnson has six points. Vikings within two points, 58-56, 9.35 remaining. Myers left open, drains the three. Keon Myers, sophomore from Fresno, California, Roosevelt High School. Yeah. Second in the conference and 10th nationally in assists, over six a game. Vikings were on him, let him go a little bit, gave him a little space, and he drained that long three-pointer. Yeah, just his 10th of the year, right? So you understand maybe why they were off him a little bit there. Mays on the sideline. They're going to call an offensive foul on Matt Mays. Tony was maybe going to call Tony Dominguez, head coach, was maybe going to call time. Let's look at this foul here. I think they're going to call for the push off right there against Keon yeah, Myers. Dip the shoulder into him a little bit. And a lot of the charge calls we've seen tonight hasn't been the sort of traditional thing, not really a charge. It's been more about somebody getting a forearm or a shoulder out and, and, and swinging it rather than the normal contact with a, with a set defender. When that arm extends a little bit, the officials are going to... Yeah, you're going to be in trouble most times. Myers bringing the ball up, wearing number two in those black Western Oregon jerseys. Red trim, red and white trim, those are the school colors. Western Oregon, of course, located in Monmouth, Oregon. And he fell over and dribbled the ball out of bounds. Looked like a little Harlem Globetrotters move there for a second. They were in town last week and uh, down in uh, Everett in Seattle, but uh, Collins couldn't control the ball, steps out of bounds. Vikings ball. With Western the, Oregon holds a five-point lead now, 61-56. With the night he's had, he's probably will, you know, welcome to give that a go, but didn't work on this occasion. Nick Velt back in the game for the Vikings. Guarded out front. Now one versus one here, Johnson against Collins. It's going to be a foul. It'll be on Javel Collins. With the pressure that was being applied, it was going to be difficult. But if the Vikings somehow could have swung the ball and made a skip pass, Matt Mays was wide open in the far corner. Would have had an open three, or if the defender had closed with his ability to get to the ball in the basket, he could have done a blow by and gotten something there. Critical point in this game, Vikings needing a basket. Seems like right around this time, whether it be against... St. Martin's on Thursday, it's, it seems like the Vikings have kind of had a little bit of a letdown in second half. This is Five, kinda, six point cushion, and then it becomes a little bit too much to overcome. Yeah, so is, let's see if the Vikings can get to, get a defensive stop here, get back down to the offensive end, and cut the, cut into that five point Western Oregon lead. Need to break the lull, so to speak, right? Western Oregon on a 7-2 run after a 54-54 tie. We're at right about the eight minute mark here, second half. Daniel Hornbeckel with the block on Collins, excuse me, on Myers. Velp out front, D'Angelo Minnis finds Velp wide open. Keeler, Moral Keeler now on him. Wow. Velp wasn't expecting the pass from Hornbeckel turnover for the Vikings. Another empty possession. Western Washington scoreless over the last two minutes. Nice oh, pass. Nice feed. Yeah. Clay, a moral killer for the lay-in. He's got 10 points. Belt for three. Too, too long. Benzel with the rebound. And... Benzel's going to get called for a foul. We'll see exactly what it is. I would not be surprised if they go to the monitor on this. Yes, they are going to review. He tried to clear John Ned out after grabbing the rebound. We'll see what how, if they declare this to be a common foul or if it is some sort of a flagrant. 
there's a pretty big replay review system here at Carver Gym, five, six cameras, so they'll they'll get a, a lot of looks at this. Officiating staff, Anthony Gregory, Brian Hutchinson, and Ben Wolf. This leads into a media timeout, and I believe they're going to look at that play. They're going to go over to the replay monitor right now. Hitting reset, 56, 63, 56, Western Oregon leads Western Washington. 7-12 remaining here in the second half. Western Oregon on a mini 5-0 run. Game was tied at 54-54, and since then Western Oregon has caused some turnovers and, uh, and, and grew their lead to seven points. The Vikings have just struggled offensively in the last four possessions, two missed shots, two turnovers. And Western Oregon be able to open up this lead, as you said earlier. It's kind of this patch of the game where there's there's been some moments where the Vikings have struggled in, in, in some of their recent losses. So you want to find a way to get a couple good possessions here, get a couple good looks at the basket. Another final from GNAC country. Kind of another surprising one. Uh, Seattle Pacific was riding a, a, a hot streak going into this week. Dropped a close game at Central Washington Thursday. They lost to Northwest Nazarene and Nampa tonight, 78-62. Nighthawks. So that makes it, so that puts Northwest Nazarene at five and six and at least temporarily puts them ahead of Western Washington for that all important sixth spot uh, in the conference standings. The last seed into the conference tournament, which of course is being hosted here at Western Washington. So the Vikings, to stay in range, need to get that victory tonight. Uh, it is, it is a tight, tight race. If, the, if Western were to win tonight, you would have at least three teams at five and six, and then we would have to see what happened with Central Washington and Montana State Billings tonight. Like we mentioned earlier, the parity in the GNAC is at an all-time high. It's going to be a battle for those six spots. Montana State Billings with the win at Central tonight. They've kind of got a, str uh, a stranglehold on top of the GNAC standings here. They're 10-1 and one in conference play. St. Martin's... Enter tonight, eight and two. They're playing up on Burnaby Mountain tonight. Uh, get a, try to get a score update for you guys on that game. St. Martin's a very good team. We saw them come in here there at night. But you know Simon Fraser at the bottom of the table at one and nine, and they're another team. Any given night, they're going to give a, you a great test. Especially at home, they're not getting beat by big margins. It's been tight games, game after game. Yeah, they're here. They are. You know, it's only a nine point margin on the season for them. You know, it, point differential even though they're one and nine look at some of these highlights here Jonathan Ned knocked that ball away oh, you can see what he's doing there uh, that's probably what they're looking at on the replay monitor little extracurricular activity with the, the play on Jonathan yeah. Ned um, now it, it looked like he caught him with a forearm that could still be flagrant if they deem the intent to be flagrant it doesn't have to necessarily be that he contacted him with an elbow if they, if they determined that that was violent and not a normal play, they could still signal that as a, as a flagrant. Good look there at WeQ Court here in Carver Gym. Renovated, reopened in 2017 after playing two seasons at Whatcom Community College. We've got this beautiful, sparkly new facility. It's a, one of the things that you take for granted here, Jeff, is just, anyway, let's hold on. Looks like there's going to be double personal fouls called on. When they looked at it, they're going to call a Jonathan Ned foul, and then they're going to call a, a foul, offensive foul on Cameron Benzel. So Western Washington looks like well they'll get the ball out of bounds. I think I heard 27, 28 seconds on the shot clock. Don't quote me on any of this until we see what it really happens. So if I've got it right, and they've not come over to us, they called the initial foul on Jonathan Ned, and then call an offensive foul on Benzel for the forearm. Okay, neither, neither were deemed flagrant. Hey, neither flagrant, right? I don't believe either are flagrant. Neither were flagrant, so they'll resume play from where it was, a foul each way, 
Western Oregon will have the ball. Almost like it never happened, but it happened. Something like that, yes. See if tempers can cool down a little bit here. 7.05 remaining, Western Oregon holds that 63-56 lead. Possibly the Vikings, that little stall and momentum there can benefit the Vikings and well, it didn't because Merle Keeler passes it up and Benzel hammers it home with an That's alley -oop. a great look. I, very tight little spot to throw a lob there. Wolves lead up to nine now. Their largest lead of the game, B.J. Colley underneath. Nice move. Yeah, good nice spin. Touch. Hey, Merle Laura Keeler's Matt done leads. a good job on Colley tonight, and B.J. made him pay right there with a really good spin move. Dyson Hughes hits the basket. Three-pointer brings the lead to 10 points now. Things starting to slip away a little bit for the Vikings. Don't want to say it, but too much. They can score in bunches. Shot clock under 10, minutes in the paint. Can't get it to go. Merle Keeler with the rebound. Dyson Hughes brings the ball up the court. You have Sonny Clay out front, going to try the three-pointer. Good defense by Daniel Hornbuckle on the perimeter. Colley with the rebound, finds Hornbuckle. Again, 10-point lead for Western Oregon. It was tied 54-54. Western Oregon's going on a little run since then to build this lead to double digits. Their largest lead of the game. Fourteen four Western Oregon lead. Jonathan Ned's gonna be called for the foul there. Puts Western Oregon in the bonus. Above the bonus. Clay. And the seventh foul was offensive, so you don't go to the free throw line for that. So but Clay will go to the free throw line one on one here. And getting down to a point here. If Clay makes a couple of these down eleven or twelve with five minutes left, that you're gonna have to start to extend the defense a little bit, speed up the game a bit so that they can't just work the shot clock down. Clay misses front end of the one and one. See if the Vikings can uh, swing the momentum back on their side. Colley in the paint, they're gonna call an offensive foul. Good defense by Moral Keeler, kinda read the move. Put his body in good position here. See the replay? Kind of read the move. He really has probably done the best job that we've seen since the turn of the calendar year on B.J. Colley. He has. He's he has done stayed, a great job tonight. Stayed in front of him. You know, contested shots better than other people have been able to do. B.J. still got 10 points, but it's 4 of 7, and it's been difficult to score. Merle Keeler with 10 points on 5 for 5 shooting. He's got 3 boards. He does have three fouls, but he's been playing with those three fouls since early in the second half. Listed at 6'10". Big boy could maybe play tied in for the Wolves when his uh, basketball eligibility is hey, done. They've had some basketball players uh, do that and end up in the NFL, right? Andy, so Kevin Andy Boss, Eppie, I believe, one. was a really good one. And, uh, Benzel with the turnaround. Putting together a very nice game for number 10. Eight points, 13 boards, nearing a double-double. Lead up to 12. Hornbuckle from downtown off the front of the rim, but they're going to call oh. a foul on Keon Myers. It'll be three shots for Hornbuckle. Got him on the closeout. So Hornbuckle will have a trio of free throws here to try to turn the momentum back in favor of the Vikings. Looks like he just caught his foot there a little bit. Moral Keeler from Port Orford. I first read it, I thought he was from Port Orchard. <laughs> Pretty Port close. Orford, Oregon, much smaller, 1,100 people roughly. You're a 6'10 kid walking around a town of 1,100 people. Everybody knows you. Moreau. 
Isaac Morrow checks back in for the Vikings. Matt Mays, D'Angelo Minnis, Hornbuckle, Ned, and Morrow on the court currently. 426 remaining, Vikings down by 10, pending this free throw. Daniel hits all three free throws. Gets the trifecta, cuts it to nine, and a little bit of full court pressure here, but they drop back off in the man. Daniel's got 11 points. Three Vikings in double digits, led by Ned with 15. Been a little quiet here in the second half. Wolves have done a nice job adjusting defensively to, the, from the, to number 13 for the Vikings. Hughes out front. Three on the clock. Gets it to Benzel. Shot clock winding down. Great defensive stand by the Vikings. With that lead down to nine, they cut into it a little bit and they have a nice defensive stand. Very important heading into this media timeout. 70 to 61, Western Oregon leads Western Washington right here on Vikings TV. We're calling the game from Week U Court in Carver Gym. When I learned about the Sustainability, Equity, and Justice Fund, it was this large sum of money for students to make Western a more sustainable campus. I was in the rec center just kind of thinking about this. People are working out super tough, and all this kinetic energy is wasted. I found out that there were products there on the market that would generate energy for Wade King Rec Center, and just wrote the application for the grant. It's not about generating electricity in order to feed electrons back into the grid. It's really about educating students. Making that bridge between theory and practice is really key to what we do at Western. You're getting thirsty, bold, refreshing. So good. I mean, dude. Welcome back to Carver Gym. Here's a highlight of an alley-oop by the Wolves. Western Oregon holds a 70-61 nine-point lead, but the Vikings have the ball, coming off a nice defensive stand, shot clock violation. There's key possessions, and I think uh, this would be one of them, Butch. Oh, absolutely. You're, you're down nine. You get one here, and you're back in the game. You don't have to panic at all. You don't have to get a three here. Getting it down to a two-possession game would be awfully nice. Like I said, the Vikings can score in bunches. One of the top 20 scoring teams in the nation. Held down a little bit recently in GNAC play, but they can score. Hornbuckle gets fouled going to the basket. He'll go right back to the free throw, and he just hit three in a row. Foul on Keon Myers. And Jeff, this might, third. this might be one of the key differences down the stretch. The Vikings come into this night 75.8% from the foul line. Western Oregon comes in at 65.9, so a 10% difference roughly. And, if, and of course, we throw the whammy on Daniel Hornbuckle there and he misses Jinxed the first. But, but especially when you're trailing, if a team is not a good free throw shooting team, boy, there's a real encouragement to come back. You know, the other night against St. Martin's, they had five guys on the floor who all shot over 75%. There were no good options to foul Thursday night, or Saturday night. Thursday, sorry. Tonight, there are many. Key in that game, Western Washington winning 95-93 in overtime in Monmouth, Oregon with exactly that, Butch, free throws. Western Oregon was 6 for 17. Western Washington wasn't stellar. They were 17 for 25 at 68%. We were talking about a two-point overtime game, and you go 6 That's, for 17 from the free throw line. Oh, difference maker. You rue that one, don't you? Cranston with the left hand, can't get it to go. Merle Keeler, offensive rebound, resets the shot clock at 20. Time dwindling down, 3.09 remaining here. Cranston gets the move, but a nice defensive play by Hornbuckle with a steal, causing the turnover. He's going to hit it. He's going to hit Matt Mays up Ooh, and under. Wow. wow. The body control. That's a tough shot. Cuts it to 64 70, six point Western Oregon lead. Vikings have caused two turnovers in a row. Hornbuckle's been the catalyst behind those de that defense. Matt Mays putting in good minutes here late in the second half. Cranston with a juke move. Kink loses control. Morrell Keeler going up against Collie, but he's going to go three in the key. 
B.J. Colley, great defense. Matt Mays, great defense. Another turnover forced by the Vikings, Butch. Yep. When they forced Cranston not to put the ball up, it put John Morrill Keeler in no man's land. He was stuck in the key and couldn't get out. And the Vikings now down six, have a chance to cut it to four or possibly three. And, and a couple good defensive possessions have helped them work their way back into this thing. Tony Dominguez, 10th year head coach, been at Western for about 28 years. Great leader of this program. Was an associate head coach on that national championship team. Hornbuckle finds Collie back to Hornbuckle. 17 on the shot clock. Guarded out front by Hughes. A lot of arm motion. Kai Johnson for three, his first attempt of the game, just off the front of the rim. Collie had the rebound. But Morrow, scrappy, gets it, resets the shot clock at 20. We're under two minutes of play. Hornbuckle, juke move for three, drains it. Boy, and a lot of guys involved in that. Collie's effort keeps it alive. Morrow's able to scramble. Kai Johnson makes a play on that, and Hornbuckle finally finishes with a three. We got a three-point game, 70-67. 2012 championship team, Paul Jones, welcome be right behind us. A little mojo maybe here in the last couple minutes of this game. Boy, and Paul Jones could score with the best of them. Three-point game now, minute 41. You've worked your way back into it. Now, how do you maintain that momentum? You, the first place is you got to do it at the defensive end like you've done it in the last three minutes. You've finally been able to put the clamps on on Western Oregon. So do the job, get the stop, get the rebound. You don't want to get, you, know, you give up a second effort here, they can run the clock inside a minute. So. Daniel Hornbuckle's been a catalyst on defense and offense. 9-0 yeah. run for the Vikings. He's got seven of those points. Matt Mays with the athletic up and under to get the other two. Hornbuckle hit that big three to pull us in within one possession. No. Dan had been in a bit of a slump. Came back Thursday, had 16 points, has 15 tonight, three of seven from three-point range. And the Vikings have finally found at least a little bit of offensive continuity and doing a great job, as we said, at the defensive end. So that's what you need now. 23 seconds on the shot clock. Get another stop, and, and, and you don't have to force a three to try to tie the game if you get a stop here. You're not chasing at all. You come down and get a score, and you're, you're within one at best, at worst, with over a minute to play. Brian Young, PA announcer here in Carver Gym, getting the crowd rallied up. Crowd's filled in nicely Saturday night. A little windy up here in Whatcom County, but it's uh, getting loud here in Carver Gym. Kai Johnson will guard the inbounds pass. They saw in Hughes will inbounds it for the Wolves. See where Western Oregon wants to go here. Do they go with Cranston? Cranston's not on the floor, so Keon. probably not him. See if Collins had the hot hand early. Maybe they run high screen here. Keon Myers guarded out front by Hornbuckle. High and tight up there. Kai Johnson on Hughes. Collie causing, but Keeler with the offensive rebound. Another defensive stop for the Vikings. Hornbuckle looks like he got kind of fouled there. They didn't call it. Steal for the Wolves. Kind of got slipped up, kind of got some arms in there, but a nice defensive stand there in transition by the Wolves. Under a minute to go right now. 70 to 67, Western Oregon holds a three point lead. And the Wolves will call a timeout. So kind of an interesting set there. They take the ball out of their point guard's hands. Keont Myers put him in the post, the high post in a horn set, throwing the ball and let him operate. And B.J. Colley made a good defensive play. <coughs> Excuse me. And then they stripped the ball from Morrill Keeler. Like a great opportunity. Daniel Hornbuckle slipped just a little bit as he was trying to get rid of it. May have, may have been because of a bump. Regardless, now you have to get another stop. For only 14 seconds on the shot clock. So if you get the stop, you're going to get the ball back with 45 seconds. Plenty of time to get a two for one or something like that. If you go reasonably quick, this game is far from over. Vikings will reset. Looks like it'll be Isaac Morrow, Daniel Hornbuckle, Kai Johnson, D'Angelo Minnis, and B.J. Colley. Dayson Hughes inbounds. He finds Javel Collins, guarded by Minnis. Hughes with the ball again, guarded by Minnis. Same set. Running that high pick and roll. Kai Johnson 
Colley with the block. He's going to try to go coast to coast. Stops up. D'Angelo Minnis with the ball. Guarded up top by Hughes. We've got 35 seconds remaining. A three-point game. Minnis with the three. In and out. Saved. And Western Oregon is going to get an easy basket here. Darn it. Game was right there, but there's 23.3 seconds left. Vikings got to move fast, get some points on the board, down five. Isaac Morrow with the three, hits it. Got it. And one. <laughs> Benzel fouled him on the clear out. Morrow will have a free throw to cut it to one. See Minnis coming through the lane, finds Morrow, like we said, doesn't shoot many threes. Hit a huge one against Hawaii Pacific. Another massive one here against Western Oregon. He'll go to the free throw line. Vikings down two. 14.5 seconds remaining. West Pfeiffer wants a look. Is asking for a review of the clock. I'm not gonna no. argue one way or the other. I wasn't looking at the clock at the time. And so, so the shot by Morrow was really something else and, uh, and to draw the foul. So we'll see where it's at. I don't think there's gonna be a major adjustment here. I'm not fully up to speed on all the college basketball rules as much as I should as a sports information director. But I, do you think they might be looking at a possible flop on that? I know it's a, I don't know if they can do that after the fact or not. Theoretically, they could. I, I did not see a flop there. It looked like I, there was contact, but at least from the angle that I saw it on the replay, I could not see. I was screened live, but but on the replay, I thought that Benzel got in. He closed out very high. Oh, okay. Looking, so, to, looking to see if actually, thank you to our booth, looking to see if his foot was on the line on that three-pointer. And they're going to give it a three. They looked at it. That's what replay review is for and confirmed that it was a three-pointer for Isaac Morrow, and he'll go to the free throw line for the rare four-point play. So set it up here. Isaac Morrow, an 89% free throw shooter, only eight of nine on the year, but but a guy with a pretty good touch. So if he makes this, you're within one, 14 and a half seconds left, both teams with a timeout left. You press, you probably have time to look for one trap and a steal rather than immediately trying to foul. And then if you don't get it on the first one, you need to foul, that, that can give you down to about eight or nine seconds still. Morrow barely hits the rim. Thought it might be an offensive board for the Vikings, but and Western Oregon's going to possess it. They got a foul here. They got a foul. Isaac Morrow's going to draw his fifth personal foul. He's going to foul out. It's four seconds left in the game. So the Vikings did try to foul in the backcourt. It wasn't one call, but, but Isaac Morrow was convinced that he had, had reached in on the baseline, which would have put the clock at about nine seconds, maybe 10. Would have been a significant difference. Big difference, but Western Oregon can somewhat ice this game here at the free throw line. Keont Myers is going to go for the one-on-one. -on -one. If he hits both, it's going to be a four-point game. But on the flip side, it could be a little bit of magic. The Vikings... Excuse me, it was, uh, there are the double bonus, so it was two free throws, but. 72% on the year coming in. See if we can have some Carver magic down the stretch. Vikings got the ball off the rebound. They will call timeout. 3.4 seconds remaining. So. Richard Wood Woodworth is in the stands. You beat me to it. We're th we great minds think alike. Richard Woodworth is in the house. Hit a half-court shot to beat Central Washington. Uh, Rico Wilkins is in the house, who went coast to coast in about this amount of time to get a game-winning layup one year. Uh, both of those against Central Washington, but uh, hey, why not another one tonight? Why not? GNAC coming down last possession. Western Oregon won by two up at Simon Fraser on Thursday. Another close game here. Great college basketball game. It has been a wild one. Just lots of swings and, and roundabouts to this one. And the momentum has gone back and forth. So now with a two-point game, the great thing about 
for the Vikings about both of those being missed is that Western Oregon can't foul. So you're in the double bonus. You can foul. You put it on the line. If it had been a three-pointer, you're the backcourt. You could foul. Let's see what they do. I would like to see them get. Now, the other night they did it where they threw the ball into Colley and he hit Menace streaking down the sideline. Maybe they'll do that again. They've got both Menace and Hornbuckle on the sidelines. It's Hornbuckle. From deep, oh. off the front of the rim. Lots of contact. He's got his arm up. It looks like we're going to have a – are we going to have a foul? Is, is Hornbuckle going to go to the free throw line for three shots? Their uh, officials are going to call game. It looked like he had his arm up that maybe a foul was called. A lot of contact out here between Hornbuckle and Myers. Yeah. Myers is still down on the ground. I'm kind of confused. Coaches are kind of confused. I think the officials are leaving the court. They're saying the game is over. Not sure if we can get a replay on that. Tony Dominguez just shanks Cam Cranston's hands. Uh, this game is over. 72-70, Western Oregon is going to get this win. And Butch, I think uh, I think we're just going to call it a night on this one. Um, yeah, we'll give a couple quick numbers. Leading scorers here, Javel Collins with 20 points, the leading scorer on the night for either team from from Western Oregon. 12 each for Morrill, Keeler, and Hughes. For the Vikings, 15 each for Daniel Hornbuckle and Jonathan Ned, and then Hornbuckle with a three that just rimmed out after he hit one from basically the same spot in the first half. A tough sure, loss. Sure hope Keon Myers is okay. He's still down on the ground. Looks like Western Washington's trainer, Masa Magida, and head coach Wes Pfeiffer are out there. Great game between two Westerns tonight here, honoring the 2012 National Championship team. Western Oregon pulls off the 72-70 win. And I think we're going to call it a night here from WeQ Court and Carver Gym. Vikings will go back on the road next week. A couple of big games. Follow all the action on www.vikings.com. The Western women nationally ranked in the top 15 will be back at home hosting Central Washington Northwest Nazarene. I'm Jeff Evans for Butch Kamina. Had a great blast tonight. Indeed. Fun times, Jeff. Thank you. Good yes. work with you. Good time in Carver Gym. And so uh, we're going to call it a night here. WeQ Court and Carver Gym. We'll see you later. Go Vikings.